Remember, a Hallmark card when you care enough to send the very best. Tonight, from Hollywood, the makers of Hallmark greeting cards bring you Anne Harding in the widened hearth on the Hallmark Playhouse. Each week, Hallmark brings you Hollywood's greatest stars in outstanding stories chosen by one of the world's best-known authors, the distinguished novelist, Mr. James Hilton. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is James Hilton. Tonight, the night of Thanksgiving, we dramatize on our Hallmark Playhouse a story by Fanny Kilborn called The Widened Hearth, a story which offers its own Thanksgiving message of friendship and festivity. For indeed, there's no day on which Americans can more truly open their hearts, not only in full awareness of how fortunate they are, but in sympathy and fellowship with others less fortunate all over the world. It's a day then for pride, but also for humility, a day when we can cast away our personal cares, yet care for others even more deeply. We of the Hallmark Playhouse join you tonight in this spirit, and we're especially glad to have as our guest that distinguished actress, Anne Harding. And now here is Frank Goss from the makers of Hallmark Cards. One of the particular joys of Christmas is sending and receiving Christmas cards. While the pleasure Christmas cards bring can never be measured, isn't it good to know that Hallmark cards are priced the same this year as they were last year, and the year before, and the year before that? And that the quality of Hallmark cards has constantly improved throughout the years? Yes, today, just as for many Christmas seasons, that Hallmark on the back of your card is looked for and welcomed. It tells your friends you cared enough to send the very best. And now, Hallmark Playhouse, presenting Fanny Kilborn's The Widened Hearth, starring Anne Harding. The Martin girls, like most girls, had their problems, and this year Thanksgiving was one of them. Their mother, who was a practical woman, could well understand her daughter's attitude, but finding a remedy made another problem for her, and here it was, already Wednesday morning. It was Lois, the older of the girls, who put her case most outspokenly. But, Mother, I already invited Bud Baxter from the office. How can I tell him? Oh, my goodness. There'll be room for Bud if you'd like to have him, dear. With the boarders? No, thanks. I'd rather be dead or, or have dinner out. Why, Lois, on Thanksgiving Day? Yes. Hi. What's this all about? Oh, we have to have the boarders for Thanksgiving dinner. What? Ring the bell, Kathy. Time for breakfast. But why? About the boarders, I mean. Ask Mother. Mother? Well, all boarding houses have a big dinner on holidays. Mother, please don't call this a boarding house. Having four paying guests doesn't make a place a boarding house. But why, Mom? Why? Start the toast, Lois, please. Because it's a responsibility we've taken on. It's our job. You get a day off from work when you think you can have some fun, and then you have to work your head off for a bunch of strangers. Well, don't forget, it'll be a busman's holiday for me, too, Lois. But they're not strangers, really. Oh, I hate that old consolidated company. I'll bet if Daddy were alive, it never would have gone broke. I'm sure it wouldn't have, dear. Would you put the chairs in place, please, Kathy? Gosh, you'd think that even boarders would want to go someplace on holidays. Why don't they go home? That's where you're supposed to go on Thanksgiving, isn't it? I'm sure they'd like nothing better, dear. Miss Dunn was going to go home, 
But then the school board decided to have school on Friday. Yeah, that's another thing. Well, what about Mr. Willis? I bet he doesn't even want to have dinner here. Well, I'm sure that what Mr. Willis chooses to do is his own business, Lois. But it doesn't free us of our responsibility, as distasteful as it may seem. Cover the toast here so it won't get cold. Okay. Well, anyway, we know that Miss Dunn is going to be here in town. And, well, I'm sure that Miss Dempsey oh, will expect her. to have dinner here. And Mr. Thompson as well. So the least we can do is is be kind to them and gracious and well, show them the consideration that, that guests are entitled to. Guests? Yes, Lois, guests. And on that day of all days, it might be well for the three of us to be thankful that we have each other, that we have such a lovely house, and that we have... Boarders? Yes. Well, I won't be here, and that's fine. Shh, here they come. Mr. Thompson, good morning. Morning. Hello, Miss Dunn. Usual place, please. And the usual cornflakes, I suppose. <laughs> a nice fall morning, isn't it, Mr. Willis? Is it? Uh, I've moved you to this side of the table, Miss Dempsey, so you can enjoy the morning sun. I dislike sunlight intensely. But then, I suppose, if you have to live in a boarding house... I'm sorry, I, I didn't know that. In, well, in that case, if you'd rather... Well, this'll do. Lois, the coffee, please. Kathy, toast. The bacon and eggs will be ready in a moment. Oh, well, in that case, I don't think I can wait. Oh, but, Mr. Willis, it'll only be a minute. Bacon? Seems to me we had ham for supper last night. Mrs. Martin, I prefer to have my eggs scrambled, if you don't mind. Why is it you never use chicory in your coffee? In New Orleans, where I come from, you the see what the I best mean, Mother? Yes, I see what you mean. <laughs> Is that you, Lois? Well, it's me, all right. Your little ray of sunshine. Hmm. Of sunshine? Then why all the gloom? Uh, something go wrong at the office? <sighs> I told Bud Baxter he couldn't come. Oh, Lois, you didn't. Just like that? I had to, didn't I? Well, you'll be here for Thanksgiving dinner then, won't you, Lois? No. No, I'll, I'll help with the work, I suppose. But I'm not going to have them ruin the whole day. Well, I wouldn't think you'd want to do all that work and then not have any fun at the end of it. Fun? It sure is funny how it's always a lot more work to get up a big dinner for people when you don't want them than for people when you do want them. Oh, maybe it only seems that way, Kathy. Well, all I know is I don't mind cleaning up after a party. But after this dinner, oh. Hey, why don't we make it a party? Oh, really now, Kathy? No, no, I mean it. We have to have them anyway, don't we? Let's pretend we're giving a dinner party and have place cards and flowers and... Well, maybe flowers are too expensive. Well, I don't know, Kathy. Getting a big dinner is about all the work I can cope with. Oh, we'll do all the party part of it, won't we, Lois? Well, don't count on me. Oh, come on, Lois. It'd be scrumptious. You could paint the place cards, Lois. You're good at that. Oh, I don't even know where my watercolors are. Oh, I'm sure we can find them. Then it's all right, Mom. Well, if you girls want to. Lois? Well. Oh, swell. We can send them invitations. Invitations? That's one thing they don't need. Oh, I know, but... Well, it'd, it'd sort of let them know that it was going to be a super special. That it was going to be a real party. You could write the invitations, Kathy. I might even let you use that super special stationery your Aunt Kate gave me last Christmas. Oh, would you, Mom? Oh, I think there's still some there. Are you going to serve turkey? Oh, we'll have to, of course. And soup? And a nice salad. Avocado salad. <gasps> Thank goodness Uncle Will's box from Florida got here on time. And we'll have a fire in the hearth. In that little fireplace? Well, we've had them before. Well, I'm sure it's big enough for a nice, cheerful fire for all of us to enjoy. It isn't the size of the hearth that counts, Lois. It's the joy that it sheds on those around it. <sighs> Borders, huh? <laughs> These cars look simply adorable, Lois. Well, honey, you, you forgot to make one for yourself, dear. Well, I won't be there, remember? Oh, Lois, of course you will. Want to hear the invitations? All finished? Yep. Listen. <clears throat> Mrs. Ann Upland Martin and her daughters, Miss Lois and Miss Kathleen Martin, would be pleased to have you take dinner with them at 2 o'clock Thanksgiving Day and spend the afternoon if there's nothing else you want to do. 
Sunday afternoon? What'd you have to say that for? Well, whoever heard of people leaving a party the minute dinner's over? It wouldn't be polite. <laughs> I think Lois may be right, Kathy. We don't know how well they'll get along. You know, an, an ill-assorted group like that, they may be restless as witches. Oh, Mom. They're no more ill-assorted than most of our family parties. <laughs> well, maybe so. Anyway, we should try to make them feel as much at home as possible. Okay to deliver them now, Mom? I think we'd better. It's getting late. <laughs> Yes? Oh. What is it, Kathy? Hello, Miss Dunn. Uh, here. It's for me? It's an invitation. Read it. Can you come? Why, yes. Yes, I think so. When I found out I couldn't get home for Thanksgiving, I was sure I'd have to stay in my room all alone. Now I won't have to. Well... We'll be counting on you then, Miss Dunn, and I'm glad you can come. I hope you can come, Mr. Willis. Well, I was going to the big game, but I didn't manage to wangle any tickets, so I guess I'm stuck. Uh, I mean, uh, thanks, Mrs. Martin. We'll be looking forward to seeing you, Mr. Willis. Well, I haven't anywhere else to go, so I guess I'll be here all right. Don't see why you should make such a fuss about it. Well, the girls, you know, Miss Dempsey, especially Kathy. What's Thanksgiving without a real party? You will come, won't you, Mr. Thompson? Well, it's most decent of you to ask me, Lois, but I'm afraid that, well... You see, my nephew is to be in town for Thanksgiving Day. He's in his first year at the university, and I just got word this morning, and... Well, I wonder if it'd be a great imposition Oh, no, I think it'd be wonderful. I mean... His name is Bobby Smith. Bobby. We'd be happy to come. Thank you, Lewis. Freshman in college? Gee. Oh, what's so wonderful about that? I'd be a freshman, too, if I'd gone. Boy, I'll bet he's handsome. Mr. Thompson's handsome, even if he is old. <laughs> Wasn't it lucky for us he had to spend Thanksgiving with his uncle? And, and that his uncle lives right here with us? Oh, he's probably stuffy and full of all kinds of airs. They're all like that the first year. Anyway, I won't be here, so what do I care what he's like? Time to stop chattering, girls. Tomorrow's a busy day. Yeah, Thanksgiving and the party. Good night, Lois. Good night, Mother. Happy dreams, darling. Night, Mom. Mother. Yes, Lois? Uh, nothing. <laughs> I'm sure Bobby Smith will be just as intriguing as your Bud Baker. <laughs> Turn to the second act of The Widened Hearth, starring Anne Harding. Have you ever thought that the holiday we are celebrating today is unique among the countries of the world? Perhaps even more than the 4th of July, it is an indication of our American heritage. Faith in God is deep-rooted in the hearts of most Americans. And while sometimes it appears to be pushed aside in the press of worldly activities, there are innumerable situations that prove otherwise. For instance, did you know that every year at Christmas, more and more Americans are sending Christmas cards that reflect the deep spiritual significance of that day? We of Hallmark know because we make cards for all America. And every year sees the enlargement of the collection of Hallmark Christmas cards designed to express those feelings. This year, the collection is larger than ever. You'll find Hallmark cards with reproductions of famous Christmas paintings, the Madonna and Child by Stanley Crane, the Holy Family by Madame Marguerite Barrier-Prévost, and many others by Hallmark Gallery artists. 
There are even complete boxes where every design calls to mind that first Christmas of over 1,900 years ago. These are some of the Christmas cards America selects and is selecting in increasing numbers this year. Yes, America has faith. And this day of Thanksgiving, 1951, is indicative. Now back to James Hilton and the second act of The Widened Hearth, starring Anne Harding. <laughs> And so we are here in Mrs. Martin's boarding house on the morning of Thanksgiving. The sun is bright, and looking out of the dining room window, Kathy sees in it perhaps an omen. An omen that her make-believe party for the boarders will turn into a really joyous occasion. Her sister Lois is also watching the street, but she has other reasons. At the sideboard, their mother was busy sorting the silverware. If you girls don't get away from that window and give me a hand with things, we'll never get dinner on by 2 o'clock. I'll help, Mom. Come on, Lois. Oh, in a minute. Oh, you're just watching for Mr. Thompson and his nephew. Well, I am not really, Kathy. <laughs> Here, Kathy, take this silverware into the kitchen and see what a little soap and water will do to it. Okay. You changed your mind, Lois? No. You're not being very fair to Kathy. Or to me, you know. Mother, I just can't stand those terrible people. Oh, maybe they only seem that way to us. And we to them, too. We've never really tried to know each other. And if people have to live together, they should at least try to be friendly. We haven't tried too hard, have we? Well, how can you be friendly with boarders? Well, try to think of them as not as being boarders. Oh, there they are. Who? Oh, Mr. Thompson and his nephew. Nice looking boy, isn't he? Oh, well, I don't know. I imagined he'd be taller. I mean... Well, he's as tall as Mr. Thompson. Mr. Thompson's a very tall man, I think. And I think he looks, well, um... Collegiate, I think. Oh, Mother, collegiate's old-fashioned. That's yes, well, you know what I mean. He does look mature. <laughs> Mother. Yes, Laura? If I painted another place card now, would the watercolor dry by 2 o'clock, do you think? <laughs> Well, those decorations are just beautiful. And that lovely maple leaf centipede. You know, sometimes you girls simply amaze me. I didn't put the place cards around yet. Oh, well, let's see. We'll put Mr. Thompson at the head of the table. Oh, is he going to carve the turkey? Oh, dear. I don't suppose he's carved one in years. But it must be nice to ask him. You can put me at the lower end here. Here, Mom? Yes. And Miss Dempsey on Mr. Thompson's right. Then Bobby Smith. And Lois on my left. Oh, Mother, why do you have to put Miss Dempsey next to him? <laughs> now, surely you're not worried about competition from Miss Dempsey. You should be on my left and Kathy on my right. That way I'll have both of you girls handy to help me. Then uh, Mr. Willis next to you and Miss Dunn there. That should make a very nice arrangement. Shall I ring the bell now, Mom? Is it time? No, dear. We won't use the bell today. This is a party. Remember? <laughs> certainly gone to a lot of trouble. Though I must say those huge pumpkins with the fruit in them are quite effective. Don't look now, Miss Dunn, but the insides of them are in those pumpkin pies on the sideboard. <laughs> well, I <I'd> soon declare. <laughs> I don't know that I've ever seen candles held in gilded walnut shells. It's quite an idea at that. I like it. You really made those place cards yourself, Miss Martin? Oh, they're not too hot, really, Mr. Smith. Oh, I think they're very, well, uh, professional. <laughs> a lot of to-do over nothing. But it does have a certain air, doesn't it? I'm sure glad I got to sit next to you, Miss Dunn. I ought to do something with this bell business. Well, sit down, everybody. <laughs> sit down, please. Oh, thank thank you. Uh, Mr. Thompson, would you please... Hmm? Um, oh. Well. We thank thee, dear Lord, for the many blessings received at thy hand. 
and for this Thanksgiving dinner we are about to enjoy. And bless all the happy friends gathered here today. We ask it in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, <clears throat> well it looks like it's up to me, huh? <laughs> Mrs. Martin, do you prefer the light or the dark? Please? Oh, please, Mr. Thompson, I can wait. Miss Dempsey, how about you? I like <laughs> Another piece of pie, Mr. Dompson. Oh, heaven no. I'm full up to here. Miss Dempsey, a little more coffee. Oh, I'm afraid not, thank you. And I want you to know, though, I've enjoyed my dinner very much. Thank you. It has been fun, hasn't it? For all of us. And now, Mrs. Martin, how about all of us pitching in and helping with the dishes? Oh, dear, no, thank you. Oh, no, the girls and I will do them after... After we've gone home, you were going to say, weren't you? But we're already at home, aren't we? So there's no chance of our going. Please? Oh, this is the chance I've been waiting for. I always wondered if a domestic science teacher could really wash dishes. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Miss Dunn, I'll wipe if you wash. Uh, hey, we'll make up ready? another team. How about it, Lois? Oh, I'm game, Bobby. We'll race. Hey, how about me? Sure. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Sitting here by the hearth like this, hearing them sing that old song. Yes. Yes, here of all places. How do you mean, Mrs. Martin? Well, think of their singing it anywhere but at home. Maybe they are at home tonight. Maybe you've made it seem a little less of a boarding house for all of us tonight. Thank you, Miss Dempsey, and I hope so. As much for our guests as for my own two girls. It hasn't been too easy for them either, you know. It hasn't been the, the complete home they could wish for, they could expect. <laughs> I know. Why, well, you sure know how to run your fingers over the ivory, boy. I'm <laughs> sure they laughed when I sat down at the piano. <laughs> how about a movie, Miss Dunn? Tonight, Mr. Willie? Sure, to sort of top off the festivities, huh? Well, I... All right, I'll only be a minute. Come on, Bobby. Time to go. Oh, gosh, you don't have to go yet, do you, Mr. Thompson? I'm afraid so, Kathy. Oh. Wouldn't want Bobby to miss his train. We've certainly had a wonderful, wonderful time. Though. I'll say. Well, and thanks very much, Mrs. Martin. Well, I'm glad you planned to spend the day with your uncle, Bobby, so you could be with us, too. Yeah. Well, th thanks again. Well, I'll go to the door with you, Bobby. Okay. I'm afraid I'd better get up to my room, Mrs. Martin. I want to write to my sister in New Hampshire. Tell her what a nice day I've had. We sure had fun, didn't we? I did, anyway. Oh, I sure did. <laughs> darn, darn that old college, anyway. Well, maybe you can come see your uncle again sometime. Yeah. Uh, Lois? What? Well, they, um, they, they have dances at the Union every Saturday night. Do you suppose your mother lit? I mean... Would you come up sometime? Oh, sure, that'd be wonderful. Swell. And uh, how, how about writing to me? I will. Okay. Well, goodbye, Lois. Goodbye, Bob. Well, the party's over. They're all gone. No, they aren't, Kathy. They'll be here tomorrow. They won't seem so nice tomorrow. It'll be different. Mom needn't be, Lois. It's up to us. Mother, you can't make a party out of 7 o'clock breakfast. Every morning? Heaven forbid. But I don't think we'll need to. I think it was because we were pretending we really wanted them here that, that made them so nice today. We didn't keep resenting them all the time. So they didn't resent us. Gosh, Mother. I don't resent them. Of course you don't, dear. And that, that's the strange part of it. You know, none of us were pretending today after the first. It was a party, 
And they all were our friends. The friends we'd invited for Thanksgiving dinner because we wanted them to share our happiness with us. You know, I, I did feel kind of like that when we were out there in the kitchen doing dishes. I know you did. Yeah. Now, I wasn't too much in favor of your party idea myself, Kathy, but I think we've all learned something today. I know I have. I if we can just make our guests feel more at home, it'll be more and more like a real home to us. Don't you think? Well, yes, because then they won't seem like, like boarders anymore. That's right. Gosh, it sure was a scrumptious day. <sighs> the fire on the hearth is just about out. Is it? I think it's just started to burn with a new light. The spirit that kindles all home fires. The three of us have sat around this little hearth many times all by ourselves. Now we're, we're not alone anymore, are we? Because we've taken into our home and our hearts those who are about us. We've learned the secret, the secret of friendship. And suddenly, as we look around us now, our little hearth that seemed so small only yesterday has grown wide. Turn in a moment. Today, on Thanksgiving Day, we as a nation acknowledge our supreme dependence on Almighty God. Perhaps this year, more than ever, we should reaffirm in our minds and hearts, as well as to the rest of the world, that our democracy rests on the truth that all men are created by God and have the same dignity and value in His eyes. So on this day, I hope you will join me in a prayer of thanksgiving. Our Father, creator of all, our humble thanks we bring for ripening fields and golden sun, for trees and stars and rain, for home and friends and a country free, but most of all, for Thee. Here again is James Hilton. It was good to have you with us tonight, Anne Harding. I'm sure our Hallmark Playhouse audience feels as I do. Your performance added very, very much to our holiday pleasure. Well, it certainly made my holiday happier for sharing it with you and, and your Hallmark Playhouse family, Mr. Hilton. Thank you for asking me. That, that was a very beautiful Thanksgiving prayer, the one that Frank Goss read. I wonder if you have copies available. We certainly do, and we'll be very happy to send a copy to you, Anne Harding, Thank or to you. any of our listeners. And now, as this time-honored holiday draws to a close, from all of us at Hallmark Playhouse, from the makers of Hallmark Cards, from Bill Gay, our producer-director, David Rose, our musical director, Axel Grunberg, who adapted tonight's story, Frank Goss, our announcer, from Anne Harding, and from myself, to all of you at home this day of Thanksgiving, our sincere greetings. May I also invite you to be with us next week when we present a delightful story by Bellamy and Helen Partridge called Salad Days. And for our starring role then, we have invited Ronald Reagan to join us. Until next Thursday then, this is James Hilton saying good night. Look for Hallmark cards that are sold only in stores that have been carefully selected to give you expert and friendly service. Remember a Hallmark card when you care enough to send the very best. The role of Lois tonight was played by Barbara Eiler. Colette McMahon was Kathy. Others in our cast were Myra Marsh, Charlotte Lawrence, Tom Tully, Gerald Moore, and Eddie Firestone. This is Frank Goss saying goodnight to you all until next week at the same time when Hallmark Playhouse returns to present Ronald Reagan in Bellamy and Helen Partridge's Salad Days. And the week following, Marcella Tellens, Night of the Hayride, starring Loretta Young. And the week after that, Lorenzo Sears, John Hancock on the Hallmark Playhouse. This is the CBS Radio Network.